Welcome to Crochet for Absolute Beginners. I'm Susan from Tiara Lace Crochet. So let's look at what you need to get you started. Whatever yarn you choose to work with, just make sure that you use the recommended hook size. Here you can see they're recommending a six millimeter hook with this particular yarn. The hook you choose again is entirely up to yourselves. Here we've got the little six millimeter hook to go with this particular yarn. It's just a plain aluminium hook and once again these are just fine to get you started. You'll also need a yarn needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors and a little stitch marker and the tape measure are optional but very useful nonetheless. Right, let's begin. One of the first things to learn in crochet is how to make a slip knot. I'm still using a chunky yarn or a five weight with a six millimeter hook. So pop the yarn ball to your left and then take the tail end of your yarn and bring it up and over in an anti-clockwise direction like so. Pop your finger on the join and just flip that little loop over the loop to the left. Then if you pinch the yarn underneath the loop and lift it up, you can then grab the tail end of the yarn, pull it to close the slip knot. You can then insert your hook into the loop and pull on the ball end of the yarn and that will slide the loop up to your hook. So there you are, you have a loop on your hook with a slip knot just below, all ready to crochet. Next we'll look at how to hold the hook and yarn. You can hold your hook like a knife or like a pencil. There is no right or wrong way at all. And then your yarn, you hold the yarn usually in your left hand. So you bring the yarn down between your middle finger and your ring finger, and then you grab it. And then you will bring the little slip knot over to your middle finger and pinch it with your thumb. If you prefer, you can always pinch with your index finger and thumb. And then you can pop the hook back into the loop or pinch with the middle finger and thumb and then here you have your working yarn all ready to crochet. So just remember that yarn goes down between your middle finger and ring finger, grab and then pinch. Now you know how to hold your hook and yarn, let's have a look at how you work a chain. Just make sure the loop on your hook isn't too tight and it slides backwards and forwards really easily. You're going to bring your hook in front of the working yarn and underneath it and then back up and over and grab that working yarn. This is called a yarn over. Then you pull the yarn through the loop on your hook. Just make sure that your hook is pointing down so it will fit through the loop. Then slide that loop up onto your hook and then you can just pinch it to secure it. You might need to just pull the loop up a little just to make sure it isn't too tight on your hook. Then repeat Insert your hook underneath the yarn, bring it up and over to grab the yarn and then allow the yarn to flow over these fingers, hold, don't hold it too tightly and just pull that loop through the loop on your hook. Then slide it back up your hook like so. You can use your index finger just to secure that little loop and then pinch the chain underneath. And if you just pull up a little, that will make sure that loop isn't too tight on your hook. So we'll do a few of these now. Then 
then if you choose to pinch with your index finger and thumb you'd find the working yarn just here you might just have to twist a little you've probably seen if you've watched any of my other videos that I hold quite often the hook like a pencil and this is how I'm most comfortable crocheting however I do flit between the two so I'll go back to the knife hold pinch with my third finger and then my thumb and then Now I'd recommend you just practice and practice working these chains because once you've mastered working the chains you really can crochet. So if we have a look at the little chains we'll look at the anatomy of the chain stitch. So I'll just remove my hook before we have a look at the anatomy of the little chain stitches. So this is the front of your chains. They do look like little V's and there is a top and a bottom loop to the chain. So if the chains are the right side facing, this will be the top loop and this will be the bottom loop. And then if you rotate your chain, you'll see the back of the chain also has some little loops or little bumps here and they're almost like a little spine running down the length of chains and sometimes you're asked to crochet into the back bump of your chain. Once you're really confident making your chain stitches just make a short length of 11 chains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we're going to work some US single crochets known as double crochets in the UK. Ignore the loop on your hook, skip that very first chain into the second chain from your hook, insert your hook underneath the top loop, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook, always sliding the loops back up to the main body of your hook and repeat, insert your hook under the top loop of the next chain, yarn over, pull through yarn over and pull through two. In your next chain insert your hook under the top loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And continue this to the end of the length of chains. If you notice on your phone or whatever device you're on, there should be a cogwheel icon and then that will help you speed up or slow down the video should you wish. It's really important that you always make sure you bring your loops back up to the main part of your crochet hook and don't crochet in the throat part of your hook. This is your last chain. This is the slip knot. And 
and that's your first row of single crochets completed. The tops of your stitches do really resemble the little chains that you made to start off with. The only difference is we refer to these little loops on the tops of your stitches as a front loop and a back loop, not a top and bottom loop. And here you'll see each stitch has got two vertical legs or bars. And the reverse of your crochet, single crochet stitch, is slightly different. It still has two little legs, but it has the addition of a little bar here at the back, a little horizontal bar. You can tell that's the wrong side of your work, especially if the tops of the stitches are facing away from you as they are here. So if you rotate it round, you'll see the tops are facing you. But a good landmark for the right side of your work quite often is where the tail end is. If it's to your left, it's usually the right side of your work. Right, we're going to look at how to turn our work now. Quite often with crochet stitches and edges, it's recommended you either chain one or more. With a single crochet, it really isn't necessary. All you need to do is slightly elongate that last loop, just a little, pull it up. Then you can turn your work either way and you'll see this is your first stitch here. You just insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull through. And again, yarn over, pull through two to complete your single crochet. And you repeat this all the way down. A good landmark is to aim to go between these little vertical, sorry, horizontal bars. You need to get underneath both the back loop and the front loop of those stitches and work a single crochet. You do this all the way to the end of the row. Now there, I've just gone under the front loop. We need to go under both loops. So just take care. The further on with your work that you are, the easier it gets. Working into your chain in the first row or so are notoriously a little bit difficult. A little tip you might find useful is I sometimes grab the uh, work with my fingers like so. And our very last stitch, you can identify that by looking for that very last bar for your last single crochet and making sure you go under the final two loops of the top of that stitch. Once again, slightly elongate that loop, turn your work and you're ready to work row three. And that's all there is to working the single crochet. So you do this all the way along. So have a practice at working your single crochet and then we'll look at the next stitch, which is a half double crochet. So work all the way down to the end and I'll meet you here. We can practice working the half double crochet on this little swatch. Begin by working two chains Then turn your work and this time we're going to work a half double crochet into this very first stitch. 
We've done the two chains to bring our work up to the right height because this is a taller stitch. Now, instead of just inserting our hook straight into the stitch, we're actually going to do a yarn over before we start. Then we're going to insert our hook into the stitch. We're going to do another yarn over and pull that through. So we now have a total of three loops on our hook. And this time we're actually going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. It will help if you just pull on those stitches to elongate them a little and then bring your hook through. And that's your half double crochet, which is called a half treble in the UK. So for the next stitch, we'll yarn over to begin, insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Three loops on our hook, yarn over, and once again, pull through all three loops and repeat, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. So yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. So we'll continue this to the end of the row and then I'll show you how to turn. Noticed how I'm sometimes using my index finger to keep the yarn on the hook. You do find your own way of handling the crochet hook and the yarn. And then our very last stitch, there's a horizontal bar under both loops. And that's our first row of half double crochets. So you can see we've got the two little legs, but we've got a little bar as well underneath the top loops of our stitch. Next, we'll chain two, one, two, and turn and we're going to work into this very first stitch under the top two loops just above this little bar. So yarn over in that first stitch. Now sometimes they ask you to skip that first stitch but it leaves a big gap so this way does work a little bit better. But we'd have to ignore this little two chains at the end and just work into the top of the half double crochet or half treble as it's known in the UK. So you can see the reverse of the half double crochet gives you this little ridge of stitches. So this is pretty little stitch. It makes quite a nice stitch for blankets as well because it's not quite as time consuming as a single crochet stitch and it's not 
as gappy as one of the taller stitches. It's one of those little in-between stitches. As I said, don't forget to press that little cogwheel if you want the video to go a little slower. So we'll just stick with two rows of the half double crochet because once you've got the idea of yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, you really can crochet anything. It's just the order that you do things in from now on where you insert your hook, how many yarn overs you do, etc. So that's the last stitch. We're going to ignore the little chain two. Okay, so that is two rows of half double crochet. Now we're going to move on to the double crochet stitch, which is known as a treble in the UK. To work the double crochet, we're going to start off by bringing our work up to the right height. So just go ahead and turn. You don't need to chain. There's a little trick I'm going to show you here. As you already know how to single crochet, just work a single crochet straight into that first stitch. So there's your first single crochet. We're now going to do what's called a stacked single crochet you're going to insert your hook into this left leg of the single crochet. So just bring your hook across and pop it underneath that left leg and work another single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And that is what you call a stacked single crochet. It gives you two single crochets on top of each other, which is going to be the equivalent of a double crochet. To do the double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch under both loops, yarn over and pull through exactly as you did for the half double crochet. But this time, we're just going to yarn over and pull through two rather than pulling through all three. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two. So once again, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so forth. So you repeat this all the way to the end of the row. So we'll have a little look at this double crochet in a second. If we think we've learned how to do a single crochet, a half double and now a double, looking at the stitch itself might make sense. So if we look here, you've got a double crochet stitch. So you have two little legs and a little bar, two little legs and then the top of the stitch. So that just looks like two single crochets on top of each other or a double crochet. If we remember just at this end we did our stacked little double crochets so we know that's going to be our very last stitch. 
we can do the same at this end but if you struggle making the stacked single crochets you can always just chain two and turn. They do recommend chain three but chaining two leaves less of a gap. You would then skip that first stitch and work a double crochet directly into that next stitch. So that's another way to work and turn in rows for double crochets. So we'll just continue to the end of the row with our double crochets. I am going to revert to how I normally hold my yarn for this. Now that I'm sure you're all familiar holding the yarn how you prefer, the principle's exactly the same. Inserting your hook, yarn over, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So once you get to the last stitch, if you look here, you'll see the top two loops of that last stitch and you just do your final double crochet in there. The last thing we'll look at is how to weave in the ends but just before then we'll look at how to work a double crochet into the turning chains. We've only worked it into the standing double crochet so far. So I'll just complete one more row off camera and we'll end up back here. So I've worked double crochets across the row to the next to last stitch. So we just go ahead, work a double crochet as normal in your last stitch. And then you'll be able to see your two turning, turning chains just here. We're going to aim for the second of those two turning chains. So yarn over. Try and go under two loops. If you aim for the bottom of that chain, you may find it easier to get your two loops on your hook like so. And then complete your double crochet. Another way to do that is a little more tricky, but we'll have a try. It's to get the lip of that hook. You might have to rotate it and then just get the lip underneath the front loop of that chain and then go underneath the back loop of the chain. If you don't have a very pointy tip to your hook that can be slightly difficult. There we go, I think we're doing, there we are. And that's one other way you can do it. And that's how it looks when you do it like that. Right, so now we're going to work out how to finish off. So the first thing to do is just do one chain. Leave yourself a reasonable amount of yarn. And snip. Then bring the yarn through and give that a little tug and that will close the knot. Then you need to thread the yarn onto your yarn needle. I find just folding over the yarn like so and then pinching it between my fingers. And so you can just see it at the tip of the yarn and then getting the eye of the needle and bringing it down over it and giving it a little wriggle and then pinching makes it a little bit easier to get the yarn through the eye if it's not that big an eye. And then just pull the yarn down so you have a longer length here. Right, so we now need to weave the yarn in. 
So if we have a look, this is a nice little thick area which would hide the yarn really well. That might be a little bit tricky to weave in and out of there and it might interfere with the tops of these stitches. So we can bring our yarn perhaps under this loop. Don't pull too tightly because you will have to work down the side of here if you're working a border. And then we're here. We can just bring our needle and weave it through this row. And then if you pull, again, not too tightly, and just adjust slightly, then it won't distort your work. And then you can see your yarns come out here. Don't go back in there because it would just unravel. Could actually go through the next one and back through. And then just one more for good luck. Another thing that helps is if you go and split the yarn slightly. So not working around it, going into the yarn, it gives it a little bit more traction and it's a little less likely to unravel. There we go. We just remove our needle and then snip the yarn as close to your work as you can. Of course, without cutting any of the stitches and just give it a little wriggle. And that's all there is to weaving in your ends nice and neatly. Now you've learned how to do your basic stitches. This is a little blanket that you'll be more than capable of crocheting. It's done entirely in single crochets. So on a future tutorial, I'll be showing how to make this blanket. So that's something to look forward to, knowing that if you can work single crochets, you're more than capable of working this little blanket. I've used the yarn I showed you at the beginning. It's a chunky yarn or a five weight. And it did recommend using a six millimeter hook. And I did say, make sure you do use the recommended hook size. Well, yes, that's the general idea, but sometimes you might want a slightly different effect from this yarn. And I found that using an eight millimeter hook, using the single crochet stitch worked out far better. So I'll just undo this a little so you can see. And it's really um, just a stroller or a pushchair blanket with just some alternating little stripes on it. And then a really easy single crochet border. Right, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care.